Welcome back to the channel Luxurious Fleet. Today we have a sneak peek and a nice little recap from the Chicago Motor Show. Of course, it's the 2020 Motor Show. And this wouldn't have been possible without the awesome assistance and just great photography and videography and just insider abilities of one of my followers, Mike Wellington. Just wanna say super thank you uh, to Mike. Thank you so much for going to the auto show, sharing these images with us so you can inform the luxurious fleet on all these awesome cars, Toyota and Lexus, that's coming for us. So without further ado, let's just jump on over and get into it. Don't forget to subscribe to the luxurious fleet and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any breaking news or reviews in the future. And let's get right into it. So here's Mike taking some pictures outside of McCormick Place. It's a huge convention center in, uh, well, in downtown Chicago, right there. Chicago Auto Show, loud and proud. I mean, even the touches on the street, look how detailed the street is there. This place looks like uh, it's extremely luxurious. Now, winter doesn't do it any favors, but it reminds me of like what Omaha would be in 100 years from now. Here's the inside looking outside. Of course, it's going to be attached probably to uh, a hotel or possibly a different hall of the convention center. But like I said, I, I have not been there before, but I mean, here's a nice little piece of art. I'm just teasing you guys, just teasing you, trying to get you guys, you know, mentally and physically as much as possible being there at the Chicago Auto Show. And there it is. There's the big globe that it's famous for um, and this big, I guess, foyer here uh, before you hop into where all the cars are at. Here is the, during the unveil of these uh, trail editions um, of the Tacoma, uh, the Tundra, as well as the Forerunner. Uh, surprisingly not that they didn't have a Forerunner there uh, in this trail edition. I thought that was kind of interesting. And here he actually took a really high quality photo of the Tundra trail edition. You see the nice black wheels on there, blacked out handles, but of course the windshield is tinted, <laughs> the windows are tinted. It's just a really clean looking vehicle. Now that wasn't the only trucks that they had there. They also had these Army Green uh, TRD off-road packages of uh, the Tacoma, the Forerunner, and the Tundra. So just super, super sharp. To be honest, I think I might like these green ones more than even the those trail editions I just came out with. What do you guys do? Do you like these uh, TRD packages better than those trail editions? I think, I don't know, maybe it's the Army Green that has me. And a quick little video here of these vehicles. They had a Sequoia back there if you didn't see it. Uh, so in Army Green, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Uh, Sequoia and Army Green, but. I love how they put these, uh, they look like Yamaha off-road bikes, which again, if you guys don't know, Toyota does own a large part of Yamaha. I wonder if that is why they had them in the back there. Of course, they worked with the Yamaha to create the V10 and the LFA. Now, one of the new models that they debuted, or I should say trims, was the Highlander XSE, which is, I would, I, like I said, I compare this to the F-Sport packages on the Lexus end of things. It's more of a visual upgrade than anything. So different wheels, different bumpers, different accents here and there. The interiors will have uh, different colors as well. So Mike had, had some good video of this, but I think he did a fantastic job of the pictures. So let's just go over, you can see how aerodynamic the bottom of the vehicle is. You can see that the different bumper there on this particular model. I didn't notice the little fog lights there at the bottom corners of the grill, you can see the tire specifications, 235 by 55s on 20 inch wheels. Um, here's some more Highlanders that had some uh, white socks and cubs. Another look at this Highlander, and of course this has the optional headlights on it. The back end looks pretty good. The front end, you see this red stitching here. You also got some awesome pictures of the exhaust as well as, not just pictures, he took a video of it. Let me see if I can pull it up, yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. You can see how the, that exhaust works. It's not a dual exhaust, it's a single pipe, but it's a, it's a twin tip exhaust. So um, the back end of the Highlander guys, this is the XSE, but it's same for all of them. There's so much space in the new one, it's unreal. Um, when you fold down the seats, it is cavernous inside of these new Highlanders. And then what do you think? What do you guys think of this big line here, this styling line? Uh, that goes over the rear fender and it kind of molds into all of the doors. It starts at the front door. Uh, the second door is like this big swoop and then it finishes by the taillights. I think that is probably the most interesting thing about the new Highlander in terms of its overall design on the exterior is that big swoop right here above the rear tire. 
Now there's also, uh, Mike was able to get inside one of the other Highlanders there. They had a bunch of them, uh, but he's, he's pointing out in the new Highlander, you can put your phone cord through this hole here um, and plug it in and charge it with those ports below. And so this is the new um, 360 camera, which you can get on the higher trims of the Highlander. It's really the identical technology that we see in our Lexus vehicles. And it's gonna have auto braking on it, which they demonstrate in here. And that's a part of like the pre-collision system. And it does have a parking assist and things like that. Um, and it has road sign assist. So it can, they have like mile per hour as well as yields and stop signs in this little course that they're in and the car is able to pick them up. So nothing really new, um, maybe for the Highlander since this, those are part of the Safety Sense 2.0 and not really new for Lexus, but it is cool to see it in action and he does does have a, a cool you know perspective. Um, and this is where the vehicle stops itself. Boom, auto brake. I thought that was pretty cool. There was this really sick Land Cruiser there. I mean, oh. Look at that, I love the gold wheels. Reminds me of the old school gold packages. Love the, the cargo rack above. And just another look of this special edition Land Cruiser looking sick. TRD Camry, Camry as well. Uh, they had, I think they also had a TRD Avalon there, but I don't know if I have any pictures of that. Uh, some Priuses, which again, Priuses sales are in the tank thanks to other Toyota hybrids just kind of doing the same thing that Prius does in terms of fuel efficiency without having uh, the crazy look of the Prius. So like I said, the Prius is in a funny spot because pretty much the whole lineup can attain very similar efficiency now with more practicality um, or doing it cheaper in the Corolla hybrid. Toyota really, really needs to figure out what they're gonna do with the Prius, fully electric or a much bigger hybrid, a uh, plug-in hybrid electric range would be nice instead of the 25 miles that they have currently in the, the Prius Prime. There's a back end of the Camry TRD. I mean, it looks cool. It's, it's so over the top and it is a Camry and I can't fault Toyota for doing uh, the TRD Camry and Avalon. At least they're, it's not boring, it's far from boring. So I'm glad they're doing something fun. Uh, although I don't know, it's just so over the top. Oh, look in the back there, look at that, that's my boy, the Sienna. We can't, can't wait for the redesigned Sienna in the next couple years. Now these pictures here are not, all, not from Toyota, but this off-roading company, uh, Chi Town, Off Road Chi Town, and they they just had awesome accessories for off roading Toyotas there. And you can see the camper on top of this uh, Forerunner. You see this sweet FJ uh, with like a an awning over a picnic area. Of course, the, you see the huge brush guards, the big tires, the lift kits. Look at this sick GX here, camper on top. Man, the GX, even the older GX, they do not look old at all. Oh, I just love that original body style of the GX. I definitely would not be upset if I had this. And if you guys wanna pause it here, you can read more about all the upgrades on that GX. And now, my friends, it's time for Lexus, where, I mean, you guys know I, I, I favor Lexus. I know more about Lexus. Lexus is my baby. This vehicle here is actually the Blackline edition for 2020. How do I know? Well, you see the wheels here, they are of a higher polish. Um, they're, they're actually a dark vapor chrome wheel finish that's similar to the LS 500's vapor chrome wheels. F Sport insert here uh, is matte, and so is this grill here. The grill on the inside is matte. However, the surrounding is still a kind of like a dark vapor chrome finish. Of course, you have the triple beams, uh, which in most cases de designate this as a 350. Here's the GS, which again looks great. I love how the GS has aged very well. Unfortunately, they haven't done their part of updating it. What do I mean age well? It's aged well in, in the design and the looks department. Although I don't like these F-Sport wheels at all. And I have met some people that really like them, but like I said, the 2015, like the 2015 GS F-Sports wheels are probably the best looking in the entire catalog of F-Sport in, in the entire history of the GS F-Sport. Here's the ES F-Sport with the 19 inch wheels. This is the only ES. Uh, that can have 19 inch wheels. The front wheels are a little bit wider, so you can't do your tire rotation uh, on the F Sport model. That to me is like already like, hey, I like how it looks, but if I can't rotate the tires, I mean, what's the point? Um, at least it's not really a performance model, you know what I'm saying? 
It is what it isn't. So adaptive variable suspension you can get on this, but it's still an ES. This is like the TRD Camry, except this looks way classier, looks a lot better, doesn't look, you know, out of control Japanese racer boy sort of thing, but uh, I do love it. And then here's another look of the GS looking very good from that angle as well. Again, the ES, the awesome wheels, the black grille. And th this this picture, I just, I'm in love with it. Um, the, the IS is looking always so good. And who knows, guys, I know a lot of you saying, hey, you, you know, you sh your next vehicle should be the next refresh or redesign IS that comes out this fall. Uh, we would love to hear more about it. So that is a really good possibility for the luxurious fleet. It's between this vehicle and one other. And that one other is this vehicle right here, the RAV4 Prime. I said I was going to get into Lexus vehicles, but I actually haven't gone over the, the, the RAV4 Prime yet. So let's get into it. Uh, this vehicle, we don't know the pricing yet of this RAV4 Prime. I like the grill. Um, you know, the, the hybrid logo on the hybrids uh, for Toyota is not my favorite. It's not as obviously luxurious looking as the hybrid logo on the Lexus, but it's it, it's a nice designation. But what was I saying? Oh, the pricing. Um, I heard somebody saying in Sweden that this is about $700 more than the top top end platinum RAV4 hybrid. That's probably gonna put this vehicle in the low 40s of starting. Of course, it's going all-wheel drive, fastest vehicle outside of the Supra in the entire Toyota lineup. And Mike just took some excellent pictures of this vehicle. There's really maybe one or two out there. In Europe, they're not calling it the Prime, but they have they call it the RAV4 plug-in. They have some prototypes over there. But in terms of America, this might be the only one. They might have a few more, but all the pictures in America that I've seen of this vehicle are this red one. So, I mean, feast your eyes, guys. There's really, until this summer when it debuts, uh, we, we won't see any other probably colors. Wheels looking sharp. Now, you, you couldn't get in this vehicle. You had to stay outside the glass. So Mike did all he could to get some nice, really nice shots of this. I can see the parking sensors here on the back. Of course, this Prime logo looking very nice. Uh, them talking about the, the sponsorship for the Olympic Games, which is kind of funny. They're, they support not only the American Olympic team, but they, of, of course the Japanese Olympic team. Hey, I mean, whatever. They got enough money to support whoever they want to, right? What do you guys think of these polished uh, wheel guards? Um, I think it looks okay because it matches the roof. Um, but I feel like, you know, that could get banged up, dinged up a little bit. I don't know how well that polish is going to hold over time. But man, I think this vehicle does look super sharp. Uh, this red paint color might be the, the way to go with the RAV4 Prime. Okay, back to Lexus. Um, they had a couple uh, of the GT3 racing RCFs there, which most people never get a chance to, you know, put their eyes on. So that's pretty sick. This display here, um, very similar to the display we had here in Omaha. Uh, however... It's just bigger. There's more content here. I could probably, if I was visiting, I would have probably spent an hour just reading everything on here. And this reminds me a lot of the Lexus Intercept sort of design language that they have in those restaurants and in Tokyo and Dubai, as well as New York City. So just a kind of continuity there uh, from their Lexus Intercept design. I really liked this little pyramid and explanation of the F Sport and the F brand. I don't think I've ever seen it explained so simply before. Uh, you have this F Racing Division, which they had that RC, uh, RCF GT3 there, right? Then they have this Performance Flagship, which the LFA, the LC, the RCF Track Edition, um, they're all in there. And then, then you have the F brand, the GSF and the RCF, and then you have this ISF, I mean, all the F Sport trims. So I like how they put that down here at the bottom. Not only is it the highest in volume, it's also the lowest in performance. And they just have this cool little timeline here. It all started with the ISF back in 2008. And it is funny that they didn't put the ISF here, but they did put the discontinued LFA up here. So if they're gonna put discontinued models, you think they would put the ISF in here as well. And maybe just put an asterisk next to it saying that it's discontinued. But yeah, starting in 2008 all the way up to 2020, and then it says a little bit more about it here. But I just like the simplicity of this little diagram that they had there in their display. Another look of the RCF, another look at the display, always looking sharp. Here is that butterfly. I already forget the name of this butterfly, but this is a butterfly that they were inspired with to make the structural blue paint color, um, which is right here. But they also had it, I'm gonna back up. I think this might be the only structural blue here. This is, a, this is an LC500 right here, guys, at the bottom of the screen. You can see the paint color down here. 
um, is that structural blue. So I just like how they, they have that diagram of that butterfly, uh, where they got the inspiration for that structural blue color. Here's the inside of, of an F-Sport LS500 uh, that Mike got a chance to sit in and listen to. So they were demonstrating the Mark Levinson sound system. So most people have no idea what Mark Levinson is. I have a video all about Mark Levinson if you wanna watch it. The LS has definitely the highest end Mark Levinson system you can get, which makes sense, it's the flagship. They have a really cool sporty you know, LS 500 here. I almost wish, it, because you, you see the other Lexus F Sport sedans, I kinda wish the LS was in in, uh, in white trim as well. I think that would've looked sharp. Bunch of speakers, I think, I believe it's like 24 speakers 2300 watts I'll put the actual numbers because I often get it mis mixed up with the other Mark Levinson systems guys I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a robot I can't just remember you know all these numbers which I'm pretty good at but I, I forget from time to time Ooh, you see this in the background see this guy see that right there that's GSF in ultrasonic blue mica 2.0 looking sick and we're gonna scroll through all these um, SUVs from Lexus and these are actually, from, from the looks of it, they're at, at the identical builds that we got here in Omaha for the SUVs. Uh, most of them were Nebula Gray or Atomic Silver. So let's get into it. This is the new Refresh GX460. Refresh for 2020, new headlights, new grill design. These F-Sport wheels are a bit of a head scratcher. They have F-Sport wheels for the GX, but there's no F-Sport package. And in fact, usually you would see these wheels, these optional wheels on the GX with the sport design package, which is not an F sport design package, it's just sport design package. And that gives you some additional chrome at the bottom of the, the bumper here. And, and a big lip down here gives you captain's chairs. Uh, and typically you see with that, sometimes if it's a luxury trim, you're gonna get the off-road package uh, with the off-roading camera as well as, as a couple other things on luxury items. So same build that we had here in Omaha, which is a great looking, um, combination with the wheels and the paint color. Here is the RX, uh, the 2020 RX. This one is the two row, so just the RX 350 uh, Atomic Silver up here. Now we didn't have these cool snowboard racks up here uh, in Omaha, but they did have roof racks. It's a great looking vehicle, uh, black interior. I uh, don't know what else to say about it. It's a best selling vehicle. Back side of it, you can see the inside of it. If you're new to the 2020 RX, they, it's a big refresh. I should have mentioned it when we were looking at the front end. The grill design changed, the headlight design changed, the rear bumper changed a little bit, but that's about it on the outside other than a couple new paint colors for the year. They brought this big 12.3 inch screen forward and we just saw this 12.3 inch screen in that high level Highlander uh, that Mike was in uh, demonstrating um, the road sign assist, the pre-collision systems, things like that. It's the same exact screen, just a little bit different software here in the Lexus. Of course, it's touchscreen now in the 2020 RX. Um, you have some quick charging ports up here. You now have six SU, uh, USBs to charge your devices in the new 2020 RX. You have a little phone holder here, um, but the interior should feel and look almost identical to every other model year from 2016 and newer. Uh, back to the GX, uh, just demonstrating how the door opens up like a refrigerator. Here is the UX. Now the UX, we did have a bicycle on top of our UX uh, at the auto show here in Omaha, except it was a road bike. This here is definitely an off-roading bike with a dual suspension, looks pretty sick. Um, that road bike back in Omaha, I think it was around four or $5,000. This thing is probably right up there as well. But let's talk about the car. This is the F-Sport package in the hybrid trim. Uh, 181 horsepower, this thing is very fuel efficient. It's only rated at 40 miles per gallon, but I've gotten this thing over 50 before um, in the city. So if you guys really, really know how to get the most out of a hybrid, I think this is probably the easiest hybrid in the entire Lexus lineup to get over the EPA rating. I struggle a little bit with the ES. RX is, it, it depends on the RX. Sometimes I can exceed those numbers. The NX, I struggle to get over those hybrid numbers, but the UX uh, is definitely the e easiest hybrid in the Lexus lineup here in America to get over the EPA estimated 40 miles a gallon. But your results may vary. Uh, you can see here are these rear taillights, 120 LEDs that go around the back. That's one of my favorite design cues of the F-Sport, or I should say the UX. Uh, what is unique to this F-Sport other than these wheels here is you get these nice dark chrome polishes on the rear bumper. Otherwise, these are gone. It's just a matte black bumper if you do not get the F-Sport trim. Here it is from the side, a big front end of the GX. Looking down the line of the SUVs, uh, this Nebula Gray RX here, that's a three-row RX. 
Uh, the Big Daddy, the LX in Nebula Gray looking good. We do need a new redesign on this vehicle. It's pretty much the same vehicle underneath since like 2008, 2009, sometime in there. So it's been a long time coming. Same thing with the GX, we really need redesign there as well. So there's the, the body on frame SUVs right next to each other looking super sick. And now, you know, it's funny because, you know, the 2019 LX looked better than the 2019 GX, but with this 2020 re refresh on the front end of the GX, it looks a lot better than the LX now. So the LX just, just needs some help, guys. $100,000 SUV needs some help. Front end of the F Sport UX looking sick. I love the fog lights. You cannot get the fog lights in an, any other trim. You can get fog lights if you get the triple beam LED headlights in the UX, which is a really rare option. You pretty much need to custom order your UX unless you're in Europe. Now this is what we've all been waiting for. Here is the LC500. This is a special edition. I believe this is the Inspiration Series. It has Nori Green Pearl as a paint color. On the interior, it's actually kind of a custom uh, two-tone of black as well as the toasted caramel. Uh, I believe this was, oh, ew, sorry, I just got distracted by that. Um, ultrasonic blue mica 2.0 gsf in the background super sick as well but back to this lc i believe this was mike's favorite uh, lexus here at the show a nice look here at the front end of the the lc 500 special edition or i should say inspiration series uh with it you get the this cool little scuff guard here this it's, it's definitely textured. You can see how these letters are raised and it says LC Inspiration Edition. Here is that toasted caramel. Actually, it might be a slightly darker. I believe this interior, this, I know this interior is unique for this uh, Inspiration series, but it does remind me of the toasted caramel interior. The back end looking super good. Um, and this color combination, the Nori Green, uh, plus this caramel interior. What's different about this interior compared to the normal caramel interior that we see? Well, everything in the car is caramel in the normal toasted caramel interior. Here you get two-tone seats, two-tone armrest, two-tone uh, door, um, even the headliner's black, which is all caramel in the standard LC. So a nice unique touch here. I like it. I don't know if I like it better than the all caramel, but I, it's a nice little contrast. Here's another look of that Nori Green Pearl, and then that a bigger scope of that unique uh, interior. And it looks like here, this might even be brown. It's really hard to tell. It, I mean, it's probably black, but just because the lighting, it looks a little bit brown, but it looks super sharp. I love the interior of the LC500. The only new Lexus coming this year is the LC500 convertible. This is in flare yellow, arguably my favorite, favorite Lexus color. Why? Well. I think it's because I've never seen it uh, in person other than once. So I've seen it once on a GSF, it looks super sick and I just have loved it ever since then. And man, does it look good on an LC. Here's another picture of it zoomed out a little bit so you can see the whole font, the new LC convertible. Zoomed in, look at the front end. In this paint, you can just see the contrast in the color. It's almost like a cheddar color down here and then almost like a highlighter color up here at the top. Now. Can you guys spot anything different other than uh, the roof missing? Can you spot anything different here? There's a couple things different on these seats. Uh, first of all, this Lexus emblem, because they know in the top down <laughs> that people are gonna be looking at the back of the headrest a little bit more often. And so Lexus decided to stamp and embroider, I don't know if it's embroidered, but it's definitely stamped or branded with the Lexus emblem here on the back of the headrest. And then here is the ventilation for the neck uh, to cool down the head of the, passengers on both the driver and the passenger side. Here's another look at the LC, just looking super stunning. Here's a profile of it, uh, so you can get an idea of the lines. It looks it looks like this vehicle was not an afterthought. It looks like Lexus planned a convertible from the beginning. You get an idea of the back end. Um, what's different back here, if you guys didn't know, the rear tail light is uh, integrated into the trunk lid, as opposed to before, it was integrated into the roof, right behind the glass roof or the carbon fiber roof of the standard LC500. The engine bay, which looks just like any other engine bay, except of course you get some yellow accents there. Uh, looking on the inside, looks like any other LC500, right? Just looking at the mirrors, which here's a fun fact, if you didn't know, a lot of Lexus models use these mirrors. In fact, most of them. So you see these mirrors on the LS, the LC, which can be a hundred thousand bucks, right? You also see these on the entry-level UX. So the same mirrors, hey, most people don't care. They look good. No, what's not on the, the UX though are these handles. And if you guys wanted a closer look of how clean everything looks back here, beautiful. No one's gonna do a convertible 
quite as well as Lexus. When they do it, they do it right. Even the SC430 continues to look better over time. And same with the IS convertibles too. Here's another look of the back. Yes, you can sit back there, but most people are not gonna be able to fit. Cool little Lexus, if you guys zoom in here, it does say Lexus, so Lexus has made this special glass here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like an acoustic glass, but it looks really thick, maybe double pane, so very high quality. And before we let you guys go, Mike was able to get the top on video. This is crazy. I don't know if there's a better video out there uh, showing the assembly and disassembly of the new convertibles uh, top. I mean, that's just, it's insane. And then he also has the fold down. So let's watch it the other way around. Fold down, you see those controls here right in the middle underneath his hand. So just like a smooth, you can do this. I think it's up to about 30 miles an hour while driving, uh, but it just looks super sick. Oh, awesome. Thanks Mike for getting those. So what do you guys think? Awesome, thank you so much again, Mike, if you're watching this. Uh, he did a great job taking some awesome pictures for the luxurious fleet. Um, so if you ever see him in the comments, make sure to thank him uh, for giving us some awesome content to share. What was your favorite part of the auto show? For me, it probably was, I mean, the LC500 convertible in flare yellow. That's probably my favorite color for the LC500 and they had it in the convertible form. I cannot believe he actually got a video of the top raising and lowering. That is next level right there. Runner up has gotta be the RAV4 Prime, right? That thing is just so, I'm so excited for that vehicle. Who knows, maybe I'll get one. A part of me wants to get one. Another part of me is just like, just get your first Lexus. Should I lean more towards the RAV4 Prime? A lot of you are saying, hey, just get the next refreshed IS and bring us some, some Lexus content. But if you guys love my content, feel free to head over to my Patreon page and support me over there. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Tons of news. I feel like I'm three weeks behind, but I'll be catching up. I'll be pumping out tons of content in the next couple weeks. And until next time, peace out, guys.